All right, guys, well, welcome. Mike McDonald here coming out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And tonight's training, just going to go through the inviting mastery uh, part one of the impact prospecting and recruiting mastery system. Basically, going to go through tonight how you can become a master prospector and recruiter without being pushy or desperate. And, you know, how it all started. And basically, I, I started in network marketing a long time ago uh, about 10 years ago at this point and you might not believe it at this point but um you know when i started off i was really introverted uh, pretty much a, a big introverted video game nerd you know socially awkward didn't have any so sales skills i was really shy i definitely wasn't a public speaker and i was definitely scared to talk to people i mean there was times where i would have an appointment and i would see the person there and i'd hide until the last possible minute until i could talk to them so you know i definitely did not have uh i guess the general outline you would think that you would need to be successful uh in a home business or network marketing and you know after a couple of years in the business i needless to say i was pretty pretty good at it um you know just kidding but um you know i was losing money in my business i had about two customers in two years and you know i was scaring prospects away with how terrible i was and you know i had hundreds of no shows and none of my friends and family really took me seriously and i really had zero business partners that had joined at that point so needless to say i was i was crushing it in my business and um that's really where uh you know that things can change that's where i started to learn how to prospect i found mentors and people i could lock arms with and actually plug into the business and you know after many years of struggling uh, these are just some of the results that i've had since then um you know i've been able to speak on stage at company events uh these are some of the different trips that i've been on so you know there's mexico there um phoenix arizona cruise to the bahamas miami uh, you know vegas so i've been able to travel all over the world at this point and you know really help make a difference and help people um you know reach their goals in their business and have a growing team all over the world so you know if anybody can do it you know if i can do it anybody can do it like i said I was not uh, a business expert. I had never done sales before. Uh, I was socially awkward, super introverted and shy. And, you know, these are just some of the results that you can, you know, get in your business when you really master inviting, um, which is really the foundation of building a successful business. So, you know, who is this course for? And basically, if you have a business or a product or service that you're looking to promote right now, and you really want to expose a lot of people to it, um, you know, sales is a numbers game. Network marketing is all a numbers game. So the more people you get in front of your business correctly, uh, the better results that you're going to get. So if you, you're seeing yourself right now and you feel like you don't know what to say, um, you don't really want to come off on as spammy on your Facebook posts or maybe your social media and you don't want to be that guy, you know, just being spammy and having all those terrible posts, you know, you're, you're not looking to be pushy or maybe you just feel like you don't want to be, you know, the quote unquote aggressive sales type. And, you know, this works great if you're introverted, you know, like me, like I said, by nature, I'm more introverted. So it, these invites are going to work great for you, but it also really works well if you are extroverted because again, one of the downsides, of that can be as you really say too much, which I'll kind of get into, but it, so it can be really great no matter what kind of personality you have um, to follow this system. And you know, if you're not a salesperson, quote unquote, you know, you feel like uh, you don't have experience like that, you don't, you know, quote unquote, have the gift to gab, whatever, it's not something that you really need to be successful in the home business or in network marketing. And, you know, just in general, if you aren't at the level you wanna be at, uh, again, the foundation to building a successful business is inviting and prospecting and getting people to see what you have. So, you know, tonight, what are you going to learn? You're going to learn a, a great hot market invite, uh, how to invite through text and social media, a long distance invite. Uh, if you're reaching out to an old friend or maybe somebody you haven't talked to in a long time, um, you know, how to invite your chicken list. So people you're maybe scared to talk to, uh, how to go back and invite people if you've already screwed it up and how to really take your business beyond inviting mastery. Like I said, this is really the foundation skill set that you wanna have, but there's a whole lot more that you wanna go into when you're building a successful business. There's more that goes into it than just inviting. And you know, obviously I only have so much time tonight. So at the end, you know, I'll go through a different way you can really take your business further beyond just inviting mastery. And if you wanna hang out to the end, uh, I've got an extra bonus training at the end that I'm gonna hook you guys up with. So stay tuned for that as well if you stick with us uh, to the end. So again, 
kind of down to the basics of inviting, right? You know, what is your main job when you're inviting? And what it is, you want to expose your prospect to your business and products for what they really are. And what a lot of people do is they try and go into a sales mode or a convincing mode, and they're trying to present before the presentation actually happens. And what a lot of times I find as well is people prejudge. And what does that mean? Well, it's basically when you're trying to, you know, play God almost, right? Or you're trying to be a psychic friend where you feel that your friends or people that you're going to talk to, they're going to be either all about it and want to join your business and buy your products, or they're going to completely hate it. And you, in the meantime, think that, so you're not even going to talk to that person or you're only going to talk to those people that you feel that are going to jump on board. And that can be one of the quick killers to your business where a lot of people have a lottery ticket mentality and they find a few people that they feel are going to go out and crush it and or they're going to love their products or love their business. And that's the only people that they talk to. And when they don't get started, then they're like, oh, you know, I'm out of luck. I can't be successful. And that's just really not the case. Again, inviting and building a successful business when you do it correctly just comes down to a numbers game. So again, in my situation, my story, a lot of my friends and family didn't join me right away. They didn't get started in my business. Even to today, you know, a lot of my personal close friends and you know family members haven't gotten started, but that didn't really stop my business um, from growing to you know over thousands of business partners and reps and customers all over the world. So you don't really have to worry about your close friends and family if they do it or not. It's more just making the decision that you're going to make it happen. So again, back to inviting, you you really want to not sell and convince. You just want to see if people are open. And that's one mistake I find a lot of people make is they just try and be in pitch mode and they're, you know, pitch monster and they're just spamming their links. They're throwing that out there and they never even ask if somebody's open or willing to check out what they have. And if you follow that mindset of seeing if people are open, it's going to be very easy to transition to your presentation without being pushy or salesy because they're going to want to see what you have. If you ask if somebody's open and they say yes, it's very easy to transition into sharing with them your opportunity or your products and services because they want to see what's going on. They're open to it. So getting right into it, you know, what's a, a great hot market invite? So this is really for people that are your close friends and family. So people that know you the best, trust you the most. Um, anytime when you're inviting, it's great to be busy and be in a hurry. Um, if you are not in a hurry, you forget to talk about this with your prospect. Um, th it really opens the door for them to ask you a bunch of questions. And again, not that you're trying to mislead people or hide things or anything like that about your business. You just want them to see your business for what it really is. And the more that you, you know, quote unquote, verbally vomit in front of them or say too much beforehand or try and present before they actually see a real presentation, it really can ruin your chances of them getting started. And, you know, there's tons of people I know that their friends have said too much to them, turn them off to the industry or turn them off to the business. And it could have really made a difference in their life. Or, you know, somebody else invited them down the road and they did it the correct way. But then at that point they got started, but it, it, initially their friend said way too much and again that's why you want to be in a hurry and have them see it for the the correct way so again once you're being busy you want to clear the time after that so you know what are you doing at x you know what are you doing at seven what are you doing tomorrow at three what are you doing this week if somebody says they're free or they're open you want to move forward if they say they're busy or they have something going on or like oh you know what's going on uh you basically lost, right? So don't move forward. Just reschedule for another time. It's not a huge deal. If you didn't go into presentation mode and explain everything at that point, you're completely fine. You can just reschedule with them later on. Say, hey, you know what? I'm busy too. No big deal. I'll catch you later. But again, if you're in a hurry, you're like, hey, real quick, um, or, you know, hey, I've got, I'm slammed today at work right now, but real quick, what are you doing tonight at seven? Um, they say nothing. Then you want to be excited. And there's a couple options you can do at this point, right? So again, they're your hot market. They know you the best, they're your best friends, your mom, you know, your brother, your sister, whatever, easy people that you can talk to. So again, if it's somebody really close, you can say, hey, I got something you got to see, I'm coming over. The end, you know, that's your invite, you're showing them your presentation, easy as that. But again, you could say something like, I've got an idea I want to run by you, I'm working on a project, I want your opinion on it. 
I've got some people you, you got to meet, you know, if you're doing a live presentation or a, a group event, you know, people will drive hours to meet a person, but they won't drive five minutes to go to a meeting, right? So if you can introduce them and edify a person, it's really going to help you out in the long run doing that, that invite, for example, if you're inviting to a group event. And uh, again, at that point, once you've cleared the date, you know, you're in a hurry, you've cleared the date, you're excited. Um, then you just want to confirm the time, right? You confirm where you're meeting at. So I'm coming over or I'll pick you up. I'll bring you there if you're going to a live meeting or you meet me at, you know, meet me for coffee, meet me at Caribou, meet me at Starbucks, whatever the case is, that's an option you can do too. And then it, if you're really dealing, again, if somebody's going to meet you and you're not picking them up, this is a really great line you can use. You can say, hey, you know, it's really important to me. Can I count on you to be there? And if these are your close friends, your family members, they're not going to want to let you down, right? So if you can lead with something like that, you're going to have a lot more people showing up for your appointments. And then finally, just confirm the time, you know, cool, I'll meet you at three o'clock at Starbucks, right? That works. All right, I'll see you there. So this is a really great invite that you can quickly use um, with your very close friends and family. Common mistake I see a lot of people make, unfortunately, though, is they try and use this invite with their acquaintances or people I haven't talked to in a while or even people they just meet where it doesn't work. You know, if it's somebody you've never met before, you've just had a, a two minute conversation with them and you're like, dude, I'm, what are you doing right now? Nothing. Cool. I'm coming over. I'm like I've never met you before. No, you're not coming over. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing tonight at seven? They say nothing. I got something you got to see. And it's like, cool. You know, it's, it's just weird. Right. So you want to focus on this kind of invite really only for your closest contacts that you have a lot of trust and rapport with. Um, and then why why text and social media inviting? Um, for me, I love it because it's perfect for introverts, but a great way that reason why this works so well is you can stick to the outline that works. And again, what I find a lot of people do is they're nervous and if they're talking on the phone or they're trying to invite in person, um, they say too much, they get nervous, they get flustered and they, they can't confirm the appointment, they can't follow the proven system that works where if you're sticking to text or through social media like a Facebook or an Instagram, it's really simple to stay on track with that. And again, you can control the conversation where uh, you don't really, again, have to worry about saying too much because you're going to stick to the outlines and you're going to have a, a designated outcome that you know is coming. So if you say one thing, your prospect's going to respond one way and then you just lead them through the path. So if you find out that they're open, it's a very simple process to lead them into a, an appointment. And again, it's great for busy people. If you have a full-time job, you've got kids, you're busy, you've got all kinds of activities, maybe you work a couple jobs, whatever the case is, text inviting and social media inviting is great because you can send out 10, 15, 20 messages you know, basically saying relatively the same thing and, you know, set five, six appointments a day and you're maybe only spending 30 minutes on it. It's not a huge time extensive thing that you're putting into it, but you can really stack the numbers up. So if you're consistent with it every day, sending out maybe five to 10, 15 invites a day, depending on, you know, how much time you're putting into your specific business, it can be a really great way to, to stack up. And again, it's like I said, it's great for introverts, but it's great for extroverts as well. It's going to keep you on track. You're not going to say too much up front. And another really great invite, it's one of my favorites, is the, the two-step text invite. So again, you can use this through any media platform, text message, Facebook, social media. Again, this is probably more with people that you have a, a good rapport with. So again, maybe that hot market or people that are pretty close to you. So people you see all the time at work, at the gym, people you talk to and you know have a phone number, you have a regular relationship with them that you see them all the time. So it could be something as simple as like coffee, question mark, lunch, question mark, beers, question mark, you know, whatever works. Um, you're just asking them for some kind of appointment that you would normally have. So think of your friends, you know, if you don't ever grab coffee with your friends or that's super weird, don't do that, you know, or grab lunch instead, you know, something that is normal for you and your friends relationships. So again, if that's going to grab beers or going to watch the game, 
whatever. So you can literally fill in the blank, like, like the next one says there, can you do X this week? So just put in something that's normal for you and your friends. And it's, if they say yes, then you move to set a time and a date. And you want to do that with an alternative close. And what that is, is you're just giving them two options that work for you. So if I'm like, hey, can you do coffee this week? And they say yes, I'm going to choose two times that work for me. So I would say something like, great, how about Wednesday afternoon or Thursday evening? You know, those work for me, would either of those work for you? And at that point, they're going to say either yes, one of those is going to work, or they're going to say no and suggest the time because they already agreed to do something with you this week, right? And you kind of look at it almost like a, a funnel or a bucket, right? Where it's got the large edges, steep sides on it. And once someone agrees to you, they're inside the bucket, they've agreed to meet with you, it's kind of hard to climb out, right? So at your point, your job then is just to narrow them down to an appointment time that works for you. And again, be normal, you know, just do what you normally do. If you don't ever text your friends, this probably isn't the best invite to use. If you never call your friends, maybe don't use that hot market invite I was talking about where you call your friends and do this. Again, be normal, stick with the kind of communication and habits that you normally have with your friends and you're going to get a lot better results. Now, long distance is another great way to invite and show prospects where you can show people all over the world, your business, your products, your service, doesn't matter. You know, if you do business there, you can show them. And what a common mistake that people will do is they really blast out their links. So again, if you're in network marketing and you've got a home business opportunity, maybe you've got a video or a website that you have that people can sign up with, instead of asking if they're open or even looking or actually inviting them, they'll blast their links on their social media, on their Facebook. They'll be like, hey, check out my great business opportunity. I'm looking for five motivated people to join me. And it, it just doesn't work. You know, your friends see what you're up to. You want to have curiosity be your friend. And again, not like you're misleading anyone, but you want to actually set an appointment and have them see it for what it really is. So when you blast your links, you lose all curiosity and opportunity to do that. You don't wanna be sending mass emails again, where you're sending out your business presentation to every single person that you possibly know and ever have an email contact with, and hey, check out my awesome business opportunity. It's just not gonna work. So overall, long distance invites are the exact same as the earlier ones I talked about. Except you're, instead of setting an appointment to meet them in person or you're coming over to their house or whatever the case is, um, you're setting a time where they can be by a computer. Um, another great invite is if I would you. So you can use this to see if people are open, but you can also use it for setting a time up to view the presentation. So if you've used one of the earlier invites, for example, you could say, great, you know, I have a video that goes through more of the details for you. If I sent that to you, would you be able to review it in this next week to, uh, so I can follow up with you? Or if I sent you this video, when would you be able to review it so I know when to follow up with you? Uh, so it gives you an opportunity to get a confirmation that if you're sending this video, they are agreeing to watch it. And then you just set a time to follow up. Where again, a lot of people, what they'll do is just blast their link to that person. And again, you wanna keep in mind the idea of how soon can you get in front of a computer because you want them sitting in front of their computer and then you verbally want to tell them where to go. Uh, a lot of people make that mistake as well where they have their friend that says they're open and then they're like, great, you know, check out my link, check out this video, you know, here's the link, I'll, I'll talk to you later. And it's just kind of really up in the air at that point. It's awkward to follow up. It's just not really fun at that point because you don't know if they watched it. They you don't know when they're watching it. So you don't want to hound them and guess when they're done. And it can just be really awkward. So if you say, you know, how soon can you be in front of a computer? Or when do you have 30 minutes? You can sit down in front of a computer. I could walk you through it. And then you just, again, you go through that alternative close process of being, hey, I could do Thursday night or Friday night. Either of those work for you. And then you set the specific time, then you're going to give them a call. And then once you're on the phone with them, you want to go through your why. So why you're doing the business, why you're excited about it, you know, maybe what you're frustrated with and has you looking to start a home business or why 
you decided to use these specific products, you know, health products, weight loss, whatever it is, and how you're using those and it's going to change your life. So why it's important for you to do that? Because people are going to buy your why and why you're doing something way more often than they're going to buy what you're doing. So they're going to be more agreeable towards you wanting to spend more time with your kids and get out of the job that you hate because you're frustrated and want to not miss your kids growing up. They're going to relate to that a lot more than you saying, oh, I just want to make a ton of money. And, you know, here's this awesome product I have and business opportunity that goes along with it. Like, they're not going to care, right? You know, you might get a few that way, but you're not going to really relate to people as much as when you lead with your why and why you're doing something because in their mind, then they can relate to why they would want to do a business or why they would want to join your team and what it could really mean for their life. And then again, you just walk them through the presentation, whether that's a video or verbal, depending on what kind of company you have. Um, you know, for me, I just show people a video at that point. And then you want to use an expert. That's one thing that in any situation when you're showing a presentation, get an expert involved. That, that can be somebody that you're working directly with, your upline, a sideline, your downline, people that know what's going on and can answer questions because a profit's not welcome in its own, their own town, right? So if you can use an expert and get somebody else on the phone, especially when it's long distance, because all they're doing is watching a video or they're here in a conference call and it, it doesn't really have as much of a bigger picture but just you. So if you can introduce into an expert or somebody else that's having success, ca capitalize on social proof, you're going to get a lot better results. Another invite is one of my favorites is reaching out to an old friend. And I, I find a lot of people struggle with, and I know I had in the past, inviting a, a friend that maybe you haven't talked to in a while, or maybe somebody you went to high school with or used to work with and kind of lost track. You know, you haven't been working or talking to him for a while, right? So this is a great invite to do that with. So it basically goes like this. I know we haven't talked in a while, but I always remember blank. You, you give them a compliment and relate to how your relationship, how you know that person. So again, it could be like, hey, you know, I always remember, we haven't talked for a while, but I always remember that you had such a great energy back in high school. I don't know what all you're up to these days, but my company is going through a surge of growth right now and we're looking for someone to help with expansion. And I thought of you, you know, it may or may not be a fit for you, but I was just curious if you might be open to a side project a few hours a week if it didn't interfere with your current work. So this is great because again, you're asking if they're open, um, you're using some fear, loss and takeaway. It's not, it may or may not be for them. Um, and again, you're relating it back to your relationship on, and how you know them. So again, be genuine with this. You know your friends, you know your relationship with them. Just think of something that is, again, genuine to your actual relationship. So when you say, hey, I remembered and you fill in a compliment, and then again, how you know them. So that could be, you know, you were always one of the smartest kids in high school, or you were always one of the hardest workers back when we used to work at XYZ company, however it is, however you know that person. So now on to recruiting your chicken list. And a lot of people have these, um, you know, people they're scared to talk to, or maybe they're more successful than them, and they're just not sure how to approach this person. And one thing you really want to keep in mind is the idea of recruiting up and how important that is when you're building a business. And unfortunately, what a lot of people do is they recruit down. And basically, if you think of how you know your friends or everybody in your contacts on a scale of one to 10, you know, 10 is going to be the most successful person. So, you know, lame example, but back in high school, you know, maybe it was the, the football the captain captain of the football team, you know, the prom queen, prom king, whatever, they're the most popular people. They're probably a 10 in that scenario, right? So again, though, if you're reaching out to those people, it's not necessarily what you think those people are. It's what they think they are in respect to you. So again, maybe you haven't talked to this person forever. Maybe you were a nerd in high school or whatever, like me, <laughs> you know, and maybe you weren't necessarily high up on the scale. So if you're talking to people that you haven't talked to since high school, you know, they might view you as a lower number. So in that scenario, you really want to stick to this invite, which is just asking for their opinion. And the beauty of recruiting up is because people tend to recruit down, like I talked about, and reach out to people that are lower on the scale. So 
not right or wrong, but you know, let's say you're six, for example, you're going to tend to reach out to fives and fours. And then let's say you get one started. Well, they're going to tend to reach out to, you know, fours and threes, and then it continues threes and twos, and then ones and then zeros. And once you get to that point, that's when you're going to start to run into a lot of people saying, Oh, I just don't have the money or they're skeptical or they're negative talking about pyramid deals and scams and, and just stuff like that. Ignorant about business in general. But when you recruit up and you talk to more successful people, they just understand it. You know, they understand business that they, they see your business opportunity, your products They're like, Oh, this makes sense. This is a way I can create a residual income and you'll just get better results. So you want to create an upward spiral of recruiting through recruiting up um, versus the down normal, which is the 10 to recruit down in your business. But using this asking for the opinion invite is a great way to ask for getting people on your chicken list to, to see your presentation. So, you know, quick example, you can be like, Hey, uncle Bob, I know you haven't, you've had a ton of success in X, Y, Z, and I've always looked up to you and you know, you're one of the most successful people I know. And I really value your opinion on things. And I started working on a new project that I'm really excited about. And I was just wondering if there's any chance I could maybe get 30 minutes of your time to get your opinion on what I'm working on. And now again, when you're doing this, you don't really care either way if they're in or not, or you know, what their opinion really is. Your job again, through inviting, is just to show people your presentation for what it really is. And, you know, you want to have a backbone, right? You don't want to just fold over anytime somebody says your business is dumb or they don't want to join or they're not interested or whatever the case is. But this is a great way where you can get your foot in the door and share with people that are, you know, more successful than you on the scale. So really what you do is you just boost their ego and it's, you know, legitimate based on your relationship with them. So, you know, maybe they have all kinds of degrees or they have PhDs and master's degrees. So you could talk about that and be like, Hey, I know you've had a lot of success, you know, in school and education, you've got all kinds of degrees and you're one of the smartest people I know. And, you know, I really value your input on things. And I just started working on a project and I'm excited about it. And, you know, since you have a lot of experience, I was just wondering if there's any chance I could maybe get 30 minutes of your time and get your opinion on what I'm working on. So again, it's a great way to expose these people. And if they're not into it, that's totally cool. Again, your job isn't to convince and sell people to get started in your business, it's just to share it with them. And the right ones will want to get started and they'll want to buy your products and join your team. It's totally cool. And if they say no, no big deal. Just ask for referrals. So be like, Hey, you know, that's totally cool. It's not for you, but I just was wondering if maybe you knew some other sharp people just like yourself that are motivated and that would be open to make some extra money if I walked them through it step by step. So again, asking for a referral is key because you never know, right? They may have a friend that's really looking and could be the next rock star on your team. And I know there's hundreds of people that I know, um, you know, that are in my primary business where they they've hit the top level of the company, right? Where they were through a referral. Somebody asked, who do you know? And that's where they came from. So again, how do you invite, you know, you're seeing this now, maybe you've been in the industry for a while and you're just seeing this and you're like, crap, you know, I, I screwed it up. What do I do now? How do I invite at this point? Well, um, first thing you want to do is apologize for screwing it up. You want to make yourself vulnerable and, you know, just tell people straight up, tell them how it is. You know, you were new and excited. Um, you know, at this point, you don't really care if they join since they already seem really like they're not into it, but just tell them you're sorry that you were excited and new and you screwed it up. You said all the wrong things, but you know, I'm, I'm sure it's not for you at this point. Um, you know, leave your money at home, but I don't want you to hear about it down the road and have it would have been for you and be mad at me because I didn't share it with you. So like I said, you know, I know it's already a no, so it's not a big deal to me either way. And, you know, I don't really care if you join, but I at least want you to know what you're saying no to. And that's a great way to get people to at least take a look. And again, a lot of these people will get started. And if they don't, it's totally fine. But again, you can always ask for referrals at that point as well, because you could say, you know, you know, other people that I don't that could want to do this. I know it's not for you, but I think, you know, a lot of people that could want to take advantage of this. And I'd love to at least share it with you so you know what you're saying no to. And again, maybe, you know, some other people that that might want to take advantage of it as well. So this is a great way to invite even if you've screwed it up.
so these are some different results. Some of the people have been working with me over the past few years that have really become master inviters and, you know, really decided to hone in on this skill and take advantage of it and use it in their business on a daily basis. Um, first one on the left here is Julie. Um, she's great. She's been working with me for a couple of years at this point. And at this point, she has qualified with the car bonus with her company. Um, she's making residual income. She's been on a bunch of trips as well. She's one of my top recruiters in my organization. So she's been really crushing this uh, by following this system and these invites and using them in her business. Um, next guy here is Wes. Uh, he's out in the Ohio area and he's been following this system and results as well. Uh, he's been growing his team from, you know, out in Cleveland, Columbus, out in Florida, and it's growing on a really fast paced as well. And um, last one here is Denise. Uh, she started working with me a few years back as well, um, working on her inviting skills and honing this skill set. And at this point, she's been able to uh, replace her income. She was a bailiff in a courthouse, um, ended up losing her job. Uh, right before she started in the industry and you know over the past couple of years have been able to replace that income and at this point she's on pace to retire her, her and her husband as well so uh, she's really been taking advantage of this as well so these are just some of the couple people i've been working with that have really been plugging in uh, to this master inviting concept and been getting great results as well so again you know inviting is really the foundation like i talked about but that's what really leads into my impact prospecting recruiting mastery system. You know, what do you do beyond inviting? And, you know, inviting, like I said, is the foundation. If you can't get people to see your business, you don't really have a business. You know, no one's ever going to start or buy your products or anything like that. And again, maybe your story is similar to me. You know, I've been doing it in the industry for about 10 years at this point. And, you know, like I talked about, I was super introverted and awkward and terrible at inviting when I first started in the industry which is fine. You know, I learned it through trial and error, but at that point, you know, I had screwed it up with most of my warm market. And for me to begin with, I didn't really have a huge circle of friends and, and influence because like I said, I wasn't a people person or, you know, anything like that. I wasn't really credible at that point. So again, you know, what do you do at that point? You know, have you gone through your warm market? You know, what do you do now? Maybe you don't have credibility with your contacts like, like I didn't when I was new. You know, how do you prospect the cold market? You know, if you don't already have these contacts, where do you find people to talk to? You know, how do you attract people to you? You know, it, there's a lot of ways that you can attract leads and people coming to ask about your business versus you just personally actively prospecting and reaching out to people. You know, how do you do that? And again, how do you create passive leads and sales for your business? So how do you create people coming to you wanting to hear about your business, your products, your service? versus again, always having to do that forever. And that was kind of my situation where I knew active prospecting works. I still do it, I recommend it. You know, I still talk to people in my warm market. I still meet people out and about and that's great, but there's not a whole lot of leverage to it where there's different tools and ways that you can attract leads and sales to you um, through marketing. And that's what, again, what really leads into my impact prospecting recruiting mastery system, where this is really part one, inviting mastery. And part two, module two is marketing and lead generation. And basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna teach you how to treat your business like a business. And a lot of people, the reason that they don't get success in business and don't get results is because they don't treat it like a business and they just treat it like a hobby. So they don't really have the tools that you need to capture leads, um, to brand yourself, to become a leader. They don't know how to market online. They don't have that skill set yet. Um, so again, this module is really going to help you master the art of lead generation. And again, if I were to do this module all by itself, you know, it, it's well over a $297 value um, for this module itself. So um, that's module two. Module three is going to be prospecting with posture. So again, it really answers the question of how do you prospect cold market? You know, how do you find your ideal prospect? Uh, how do you start a conversation naturally with someone that you meet out and about? Uh, that was one thing I struggled with, with a, for a long time was how do I even have a conversation with someone? That's how socially awkward I was. So again, this is really going to give you a step-by-step -step blueprint um, to either a lead 
or to having someone see your presentation. And again, this is going to really teach you how to get people to want to see what you have to offer. Again, like I said, a common mistake people make is they're pitch monsters and they're just throwing their links, they're throwing their opportunity in people's faces when they're not even looking or open. And again, this is gonna teach you how to get people to wanna see what you have. Um, you're also gonna learn some words you must avoid while prospecting. There's gonna be some words that you can say right away. It's just gonna throw up instant red flags and turn your prospects off. So I'm gonna go through that. Um, also how to stay in control with your prospects. Uh, a lot of times what people have happen is their prospects start asking them a bunch of questions and the, they lose control of the whole conversation and that person never sees their, their business or products or services. So you're going to learn how to stay in control of the conversation with your prospects and how to have a CEO posture. Again, a lot of people are very needy and beggy, uh, desperate when they're prospecting. This is going to teach you how to have the posture of a CEO. And again, this module is well over a $297 value in and of itself um, for prospecting with posture. Module four is going to go over the action plan and automation you're going to need to create success in your business. So basically the daily habits you're going to need to succeed. I'm um, going to help you customize your game plan for your success. Uh, tools you can use to really automate your marketing and lead generation. Um, and then also really how to determine what your income producing activity should be for your specific business. And then also how to leverage your time and really create results faster um, through automate, automation and following a proven action plan that's gonna get you results. So again, this module, uh, also a $297 value. Um, module five is gonna really go over creating content to attract your target market. So again, this is where I talked about earlier about attracting leads and people to you. Um, so you're going to learn how to create content to attract your ideal prospect. So it doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, you know, travel, weight loss, energy, uh, fitness, whatever the case is, you're going to learn what kind of content to create to really attract your ideal prospects. Um, and then where to market your content and bring, pros bring in prospects that are ready to buy. That's one thing that people really make the mistake of is, well, they don't know how to make content, but if they do, they don't really know where to put it to start attracting people to them. So that's what I'm going to go through as well. Um, and again, what to say in your content to start generating leads and sales. Some common mistakes people make that, you know, maybe they have content out there, but they're not getting leads or sales through it. Um, I'm going to tell you what to say to help you do that. And then also how to position yourself as an expert through your content. Um, again, to position yourself as a leader. People People work with people. It doesn't matter necessarily how awesome your comp plan is, how great your products are. Well, that's obviously good to have those things, but people really work with people. So this is gonna teach you how to position yourself as an expert through your content. And then again, how to generate leads and sales to your content, even if you're brand new. So I don't care if you've been around a day, You know, we'll teach you strategies on how you can create content to start getting leads and sales for your business even if you don't, you know, you're just getting started. So again, this, this module itself is a $297 value as well. Um, module number six is the top earner mindset. And a lot of people maybe don't understand the value of having the right mindset, but again, you really want to have the attitude and mindset of a top earner. And what does that mean? Well, you're going to learn how to develop leaders in your team, create organ duplication in your organization, um, how to get out of your comfort zone and become a top earner. A lot of people get stuck in their comfort zone and that's keeping them where they're at. You know, if you want things to change, you need to change. And if you want things to get better, your thoughts and actions need to get better as well. So this is going to help you get outside of your comfort zone. Um, and then, you know, the mindset you need to be a top recruiter in your business and then how to avoid frustration with the top earner mindset. And again, this map module it's a $297 value as well. Um, and again, uh, for my impact prospecting and recruiting mastery system, uh, if you want to take advantage of this right now, the first five orders um, that come in also get my form recruiting machine blueprint training, uh, which is over a $600 value for free. So this training really goes through the ins and outs of exactly what to say in a conversation um, to find out the pain of your prospect, to find out what it is that they're looking for, find out exactly 
why they would be a fit for your business and the questions that you can ask them to really lead them into um, your presentation and find out exactly why they'd want to check it out and join your business. So again, the first people that want to get started um, with my impact prospecting recruiting mastery system, uh, get access to that as well for free. Um, so again, my impact prospecting recruiting mastery system, um, right now we have the special price available um, for only $297, which is basically the, the price of, you know, one module. So right now, um, before launch happens, uh, we're going to have that special price available um, for people. And I, I just posted up uh, the link there that people can register. So you can definitely check that out. But again, over $2,300 in value for the cost of just one module. And like I said, you're already getting the I part of the impact prospecting recruiting mastery system right now. Um, so again, the, the whole thing itself, only $297. And um, it'll be starting in a couple weeks here. And when it does, the price will go up at that point so if you order now before launch starts um it's only 297 and we're going to be doing it with uh different webinar training so it'll be uh, a five-part um, webinar series as well and again um here's the link to order you just go to coachmikemcdonald.com forward slash impact uh to register for this and like i said the the link should be active there you can click and register for that as well and if you stuck it out to the end, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys got some value out of this. Um, if you want to get that bonus training, uh, like I was talking about at the beginning, uh, you can check that out there. The seven proven steps to closing uh, for your business and check that out as well. So you can go to that link. But yeah, to get registered, go to coachmikemcdonald.com forward slash impact. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you on the next webinar.